welcome to Mission Majima, Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about the Sabhasava Sutta, the second sutta of the Majjhima Nikaya. So I think it's good to begin by defining asava. Um, it's variously translated as outflow, inflow, fermentation, defilement, basically. And traditionally, it means uh, the kamasava, so the asava of sensuality, bhavasava, the defilement of becoming, or the asava of becoming, and avijasava, so the asava of ignorance. And these are considered the three roots of becoming and all that is unwholesome in the heart. In this sutta, it seems to be used in a much broader context to describe all the unwholesome states of mind. And the sutta goes into seven different means of dispelling or restraining these asavas. So the Buddha speaks about seeing, which is uh, seeing not in terms of self and all these different ways of uh, view, um, but rather just seeing phenomena with appropriate attention, yoniso manisikara, in terms of the Four Noble Truths. He talks about restraining, um, which is restraining the sense faculties. Uh, he talks about using, which is reflecting appropriately as we use the different requisites that we use for, for life. He talks about enduring, so enduring difficult um, uh, sensations, uh, ill-spoken words, and more. He talks about avoiding, uh, and that's avoiding uh, angry elephants, a cesspit, all sorts of fun things. Dispelling, which is uh, basically wiping out of existence with a more forceful approach, negative states. And finally, he speaks about developing the seven enlightenment factors. So it's a tool belt. What do you find interesting, most interesting about this teaching, about the sutta? I just find the breadth and scope of the teaching so useful. Um, I came to this sutta after doing a lot of meditation retreats where I was basically coming to an approach of meditation. That's the whole of the path. That's all you need to do. I don't want anything else. I don't want a religion. Um, just give me the meditation. Whereas I was fortunate enough to find an essay by Tanisa Robiku called One Tool Among Many, which you know uses this tool belt analogy uh, where it's not just bhavana, so development, that seventh uh, way of removing the asabas, but you've got all these other tools which you can use, and there's a place for them, and the Buddha allowed it, even you know, quite forceful tools like the sledgehammer in the tool belt, uh, which is yeah, destroying or removing distract distracting thoughts where um, yeah, the Buddha says when there are certain types of uh, thoughts of sensuality, of ill will, of harming or cruelty, mm -hmm. where you can actually destroy, annihilate, wipe out of existence, uh, and not tolerate mm. these these thoughts. There's a place for that. It's it's a very strong approach, but the Buddha is willing to to go and, and speak strongly at times because mm. there are aspects of the mind which yeah, one can use that approach with. Mm. And yourself, what a what aspect of the suttas? most uh, intriguing or um, useful for you? I think the, uh, to sort of speak to the other side of the tool belt, um, his first means of dispelling asava, of seeing. And, you know, specifically he says one does not attend with inappropriate attention, anyoniso manasikara, to these uh, questions around the self. And it's kind of hilarious how well he describes our thought process. Was I in the past? Was I not in the past? How was I in the past? What will I be in the past? Or having been what, what will I become? And so on with the future and the present. And then he says to move past this, one looks at phenomena in terms of just the Four Noble Truths. And there's such a gentleness in that, um, where so often I think as modern practitioners, we come with this very heavy-handed approach to trying to correct ourselves. And the Buddha's acknowledgement that there's really a place just for, with wisdom, looking at these patterns coming up and seeing the Four Noble Truths in them, seeing how they cause suffering, how they feel, and that in the light of wisdom, sometimes they can just dissolve of their own accord. 
I find it such a gentle acknowledgement of that and reminds me of Ajahn Jayasaro saying that with certain defilements, it's like kids playing underneath the staircase and you just open the door, turn on the light and say, carry on. And all the fun's gone, they stop. For you, what uh, means of dispelling defilement has sort of resonates the most or has been most intriguing to you? Um, you know, one which readily comes to mind is using. So the Buddha here talks about ways of using the material supports of life. So it's framed in the, you know, the aspects of a monastic life. So robe, rag robes for clothing, uh, alms food for food, a shelter in medicine. Um, but in a monastery, we reflect on these at least once a day. We recite them out loud. So with regards to food in particular, why is he reflecting? I use alms food not for fun, not for pleasure, not for fattening, hmm. not for beautification, only for the maintenance and nourishment of this body, for keeping it healthy, for helping with the holy life, thinking thus, I will allay hunger without overeating so that I may continue to live blamelessly and at ease. And it rolls off the tongue because we recite it every day as a group. Hmm. Um, so we've been reciting that pretty much, you know, most every day, um, for the last 15 years, and we do that as a group. And this is what's called a pericope, which is a stock phrase. And each of these seven is its own stock phrase. We find them in other places. This particular one about the requisites, we find it a dozen or so, possibly other times in this, uh, in the Majjhima and elsewhere. And uh, they each of them really lend themselves to mm -hmm. memorization. So, and yourself, which one of these really stands out to you as being especially helpful? For me, maybe apart from that of seeing, I think the means of dispelling asava through avoiding is really interesting because, you know, it, it's just an acknowledgement that we have, um, I think, limits. Like you, you don't need to walk straight into situations that you're unprepared for that are going to give rise to greed or anger or something in a way that you aren't prepared to deal with. And there's a real place in skillful practice for knowing what are your angry elephants, you know, what are your cesspits, what are your inappropriate seats. Um, and then in meditation as well, I think, you know, in means of dispelling resentment, the Buddha talks about that means of just not bringing someone to mind. And I think there's a conceit in some psychological circles that you have to confront every underlying pattern and issue right now. And I think this is the Buddha, there's resonance where the Buddha is saying, you know, you don't have to, you can put some stuff aside for now. And so once again, that gentility. So I think usually how we finish up, Ajahn, is uh, you get to read us a quote. So this is from the section on view. So this speculative view, Bhikkhus, is called a thicket of views, a wilderness of views, a contortion of views, a vacillation of views, a fetter of views, fettered by the fetter of views, the untaught ordinary person, the patuchina, is not freed from birth, aging, and death, from sorrow, limitation, pain, grief, and despair. They are not freed from suffering, I say. Now, John, what is the word of the week? The word of the week is asava. And that means uh, outflow, inflow, uh, or fermentation. And uh, I... It comes from the root su, which means to flow. And I like the term outflow because um, it speaks to this mind going out. It's the same word as like pus coming out of a wound. And Ajahn Dun, you know, famously said that, um, or sorry, Longpur Dun famously said that uh, the mind going out of itself, outside itself, is the root of suffering. And the mind watching itself is the end, uh, the path to the end of suffering. So nice. And just a quick note, the Chinese word for asava is lo, mm. which is a water radical next to a roof. So it's translated as leakages in Zen circles. So That's very, very good. Yeah. Ajahn. All right, Ajahn. See everybody over on Zoom in just a bit. Feel free to go over there right now. And then we'll see you again next week, same time. Ajahn Minakaya 3. Ajahn.